Hi folks, uh, so today I'm going to be working on putting together an anchor router table. Um, I am at the point in my project where I've made some improvements to my garage. Um, yeah, I'm barefoot. You know what, it's my garage. You don't want to go barefoot in your garage, wear shoes. So, um, back, back on subject, I've invested in a rigid um, 10 inch table saw. It's a R4512, I believe. Uh, yep, that's exactly what it is, R4512. You know, I, I thought about a lot of different table saws. I very seriously considered Grizzly. Um, they didn't have it in stock and they wanted a buttload of money to ship it to me. Um, and at the end of the day, I'm not going into the cabinet making business. I'm just building cabinets for my home. And so if I make a mistake here or there, it just doesn't matter. There's plenty of people that have said great things about this saw. There's also a Delta saw. Um, Honestly, I had a really bad experience with a Delta Unisaw. Um, I just thought it was a piece of junk. It threw dust everywhere and I could not upgrade the saw to include modern safety items like a riving knife. And I just didn't want to take another chance and there's some people that had had bad experiences with them. So at the end of the day, I decided that you know, my rigid tools have well outperformed all of my expectations. They've been phenomenal tools. Um, and so I took a chance and I bought a, a rigid R4512. Now, the fence system on most fences sucks. And I spend, just maybe it's because it's me, I spend a lot of time getting my cut set up and it was a really, really frustrating experience. With my Delta Unisaw, I had a Beesmeyer fence, I had an over the blade guard. Yeah, the over the blade guard was junk. Um, but the Beesmeyer fence, it, it really just stunk and I spent a lot of time straightening that up and I added a digital readout to it and and I think the, the, the problem for me is I'm used to, I've got some exposure to doing machining so I'm used to measuring down to hundredths of an inch and I guess in woodworking people don't just, just don't do that. So shame on me. So what I decided is I was going to buy a good capable table saw and then I would invest heavily in a precision fence system. And you know, if I don't like it, I can move the fence system over to another saw. But so, and I thought about doing a, a table saw mounted router table. And then I remembered, you know what? I hate changing my tools over. I like to have stuff set up for a task and then do it. So I don't spend a lot of time showing my um, garage because it's, it's messy. So let me give you guys a very quick tour. So first and foremost, I have an air conditioner that I mounted in here. And you know, it's not very pretty, but it's a two ton air conditioner and it keeps it really nice. I have a Hitachi table saw and then I have some shelves to get just my wood out of the way. And I have a, hiding in the corner, I have a planer and a grizzly um, uh, jointer and a grizzly bandsaw and then you know, that's that's really just kind of it. So I've got a spray foam machine hiding over here in the corner. At some point, I think I'm going to spray foam the walls in here, or at least that wall, and maybe the roof. But um, I just don't know if it makes a lot of sense to insulate this thing to the degree I did the house. So um, I've been really impressed with how Incra um, puts their, uh, how, how they package their stuff. They used all craft paper and, and everything's recyclable. Um, so I really commend them for being environmentally sensible. Um, you know, there's nothing that makes me angrier than when I order something and I open the box and the box is inhabited by gremlins in the form of uh, styrofoam peanuts that go everywhere and are just a mess to get rid of. So, huh, and there's my friend styrofoam. You know, this is a very sensibly packed router table. They've done a nice job. They've mounted this for me. You know, overall, I give this a 10. I have a good feeling about opening this stuff, seeing it properly packaged and, um, you know, I, at one point I was going to make some router inserts out of uh, a fiberglass material. 
it didn't go real well. And um, I bought a router fence system from Peachtree Woodworking. That was junk. Um, it's around here. So I actually I might have recycled it. It was really junk. It was a not a very well thought out fence system, and I didn't have any confidence that it would provide me with the accuracy that I was seeking. So I don't know exactly how this is supposed to go together, but I am a little bit mechanically inclined and I haven't seen the instructions for this, so I'm just gonna keep opening stuff till I find what I think I'm looking for. So there we are. And they're written nicely in English. It's not IKEA instructions. Do, 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 do. Here's a list of stuff we sent you, and here's what to do with it. Assemble the leg levelers. Mm-hmm. All right, I think this is straightforward. And, you know, I'm just picking this up. This is how they package everything. You know, this is, this is nicely packaged. It's uh, really well wrapped. Everything's protected where it gets here in one piece. They even go to the trouble to isolate the metal pieces so they won't scratch the hell out of one another. I mean, this is just how it's supposed to be. I'm, I'm really impressed with how this is, uh, is packed. And I'll be honest, I could have built this, but it wouldn't have been as thin. And um, this is one of those times where I just, I, I wanted this stuff to be done right. Now, I don't think, Actually, this is where I think maybe their instructions might not be right because I bought the wheel kit because I have a small garage and I need to move stuff around. So I need to get this. I need more work surface. All right, this is interesting. So I have a caster, two loose wheels. Oh, I bet it's a three-point wheel system. Okay, that makes more sense. This is still um, interesting. So we'll see how this works. I think we're ready for the table, so I'm going to move it out of the way. You know, and again, all the parts are nicely packaged where, you know, even with UPS, they weren't going to rattle this stuff around and destroy it. So, you know, I'm, I'm pleased so far, and I'm a tough customer. I have moderately high expectations. You know, I work hard for my money. And uh, I like things that just work and are, are nice. One of the things I really appreciate about the Inker stuff when I was doing my research is it just seems to be really well engineered. And um, so far, that's what it seems like. Seems to be really well engineered, nice instructions. I suspect this is really sold as an upgrade. So, you know, this looks a lot like uh, 8020. Oh, I 
get ripped. That's not nice. 5 sixteenths nut with no washers. So it looks like the inserts are glued, pressed and glued into the bottom. You know, it's still a very acceptable way to do this. I mean, this is this is nice stuff. And it ought to be. It was not cheap. It wasn't cheap by a long shot. I think I spent $600 on the saw and $1,800 on the IncraFence system, router table, and router lift. And, you know, that's not chump change, but I... Um, if you want to do good work, you got to have good tools. And this stuff's been, I've had this stuff for probably two weeks now. I uh, didn't get around to moving it as fast as I wanted to. I had a little bit of an injury where I hit my head and uh, gave me a concussion, so I've been taking it easy for a couple weeks. And, uh, you know, that sucks, but these things happen in life and you just kind of move on with it. Now I will say that this one looks crooked but I'm not going to be that picky. Yeah this is this is absolutely crooked by a degree or two. You know it's a leg leveler. It'll be okay. reason they want you to drop these into these slots. You can get a tape measure and I'm going to rub hardware. What you're looking for, you're not going to find. So those are in. I'm just not understanding what difference it makes to drop them in versus sliding them in from the bottom. These are going to hold real well, but I actually think these are going to be just fine. You know, if they had used hex bolts, well, I guess the hex bolts wouldn't jam against this 8020 stuff is the way these do. So one thing you want to pay attention to is where you put the wheel bracket because I all, I thought for a second there I'd put it on the wrong side and it turns out I'm okay. But if you, you want the wheel bracket where the legs are. This is a 
good enough. It's gonna get flipped over in a second here when I put the top down. So, <clears throat> they don't tell you how to identify if you have a offset or a left hand or offset or center router table. But the cursory difference is that if you have a slot that runs this way, you have an offset table, and if you have a slot that runs this way, you have a um, center table. Now, it's annoying that these are not pre-drilled, because that means I have to drill them, and well, that's just begging for trouble. So, you know, as expensive as this is, I really expect them to have done the drilling for me and not that I have to like lay out the table and figure out where everything's going to go. So unfortunately I have to I have to do all the dirty work. Yeah, I really would have expected this to have been drilled. So, now I've got to stop and go find drill and saw a uh, drill. Um, so one of the other lovely features is, um, in, in addition to not being pre-drilled, they um, you have to avoid drilling through the tabletop. So that means using a piece of tape to mark how deep I want the drill to go. And then I have to drill six, seven, a dozen holes. So that's really just lovely. And as luck would have it, I happen to have a nut driver that is exactly the size for this, so this is going to make short work of this. It would have if the nut hadn't come out. This is sort of annoying. They tell you to put the top on and then they tell you how you could uh, enclose it. Guess if I want to enclose it, I'll have to add a, um, I'll take the top off. If there's a trick to this, I don't know what it is. The only 
thing I can think of is to take the wheel out in order to get access to this. really wish I had a better way to do this, but I, I just can't think of anything. This has got to be a mistake. No. God damn, it sure looks like one. So this is really irritating. If they had changed the order of assembly where you put this together and then come back and put these together, I wouldn't have made the mistake that I made. It's still a shitty design. I mean, the, the way these wheels are attached is just a shitty design and it is very, very difficult to do for someone who is working by themselves. And, you know, that's unfortunate because the majority of what Inker seems to make is actually really well designed. This is just something that isn't. You know, there's just not good finger access to get in here and insert these and doing this the way I'm doing it is just a fool's errand. There we go. I managed to get it done, but this is still just a really shitty assembly um, in terms of clearance and they could have used, you know, three cents more steel and not have this problem. Because then you would have had clearance to get in here and, and fasten bolts and, oh, and it looks like this is going to make it even worse. Gee, guys, thanks. I really, really appreciate you guys saving fucking five cents on these fit, on each of these wheels. There's just no good way to get in here. Um, I wonder if I'm doing this wrong. Let me check these 
crappy ass instructions on these. Nope, they show that all three bolts go up in there. Man, this is just shitty because there's no access. And if they'd made this a little taller, it wouldn't be an issue. Another fucking half inch and I could get in here with wrenches, maybe three quarters of an inch. But you know, that's, what are we talking? Five cents worth of steel here? You know, and the problem is whoever did this has never actually apparently put one together. Damn it. There's just nowhere to get a normal size wrench in here because you can't get past the fucking wheel. So I, I have no idea how they expect this to be assembled. But I can tell you what, it's a pain in the ass. You know, you have access from one side apparently, but not the other. Man, that, that's too tight. You're just not using enough steel here. You need just a little bit more so that people can get their fucking wrenches in and out. So that's one piece of shit down, one more to go. And I guess at this point I might as well take this. Well, I can't get it out because it's... Yeah, there's just no way but to sit here and fight with this. I give this an F as an engineering project. And I'm only talking about how the wheels are designed. <laughs> if I had four hands, this wouldn't be as big of a deal. Apparently the only way to actually do this is to take it out because otherwise you just can't, you, there's again no space to maneuver in here. Yeah, and somebody probably thought this was cute. It's a cute design. It saves five cents worth of steel. These are just like a quarter inch too close together and way too close to the wheel and it makes it really, really difficult to get in here and do the adjustments to get these tight. And if they just made this a, this bracket taller, it would have been fine. You know, it would have probably been close to the other stuff, but it would have been okay.
Uh, the foot pedal design doesn't look too bad. Um, So let's flip this over and see how it looks. So what I'm doing now is uh, adjusting the lower brackets and getting everything level. Making sure there isn't any trap stress in the legs. Okay, so, and this is the kind of stuff they pack everything in. Which is actually really nice. I mean, this is a really clean way to do it. The paper is, is recyclable wow well, wish they hadn't used bubble wrap and tape on this I didn't have enough bubble wrap. So I did go ahead and spring for a router lift because it's something I've wanted for a really long time. Unfortunately, it has a um, zip tie on it, so we'll fix that. It's always fun to take something out of a box for the first time. I think that's half the fun of buying tools. say this is a nicely alright where did the instructions go because I'm going to have to read them Weird. I thought I just had them. Yeah, it's because they're under here.
wow, this is really nice. Okay. So these have this is kind of an ingenious system to adjust these, and they um, fit in here in different configurations, and it basically makes it so it works with a whole bunch of different routers. So that's hole number four, and then A, B, C, D. Yeah, okay.
Okay, so that's in. I think it's okay. So it comes with a cam screw, which lets you... Oh, that's really nice. I might go the other way with it. So that what the cam screw does is wedges the plate in so that it doesn't move. Ouch! That's not cool. I got a fucking four micro splinter. Oh, that was deep, too. I've got it put together and I've got my router mounted and I'm going to go ahead and lock that, unlock that and then yeah I've wanted that for a long time. So I don't need the base right now so it can just go back in here. So. 
Thanks for watching. I hope you found this interesting. And uh, so far, this is step one in assembling an Inker router table. I've got the table together, and in my next video, I will mount the fence and the rest of the pieces to this.